Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Keikaku Corner. Now we're in season two, if you guys didn't see last episode with all of our clips and everything like that. Uh, we were in season two. We're still in season two. We haven't, we haven't moved on to season three just yet. We're on episode two of season two. And uh, I'm here, Matt Marrero, along with Tristan Walter, who I forget. I always forget what side you're on, Tristan. Uh, I think you're on this side, which means nothing to you because we actually can't see each other while we're recording. But uh, you know which side you're on, right, Tristan? Welcome to Keikaku Corner, where we flip sides and the points don't matter. Exactly. Well, you know what side you're on, because you've seen every single clip of Keikaku Corner, haven't you, Tristan? Obviously. Yes? Yeah, he did. Okay, yes. good. So that checks out. That checks out. So, uh, you, so today we're talking about a bunch of different topics from across the, uh, the interwebs. Let me look over here. This is my reference point. So if you guys see me looking down, I noticed last time I was looking down a lot, uh, my reference point, which is my phone. So let's see here. So we're going to, cause this is part of the opening that we usually do. If you guys maybe some new, uh, new uh, listeners to the, uh, to the show, uh, we're doing our opening right now. And then we'll just talk about the actual first topic of the day included in the opening. So, uh, here we have, uh, the Common Rider Zio or Zio trademark. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, potentially stolen manga appeared on an auction site. This is all Japanese uh, auction site stuff, but we'll still talk about that a little bit later as well. Um, uh, there is a very interesting Kickstarter for a new Robotech game. We're back on that Harmony Gold news, even though it's not technically a Harmony Gold issue, but we're back on that news, guys. Um, you remember how scathing we were against them. Professor uses Godzilla to teach the Constitution. Uh, I would say I love America, but that's a, it's on the Japanese side, so uh, Nihon ga daisuki desu. Uh, and let's see. Um, there's an... I had to say that. I had oh, no, to, no, no, you, you said I, it well. Because I had to say it for the Mega Man X review uh, on our Those Guys Play channel, So because I, I wrote it in, so I was like, Nihon ga daisuki desu. And so I had to practice it. So that's like the one thing I know. Um, Shout Factory announces a MMPR, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, 25th Anniversary Steelbook. We're going to talk about that as well, because that's very interesting. Um, there was a rock band. This is all, this is on the Japanese side as well. Rock band uh, that crowdfunded an anime that's uh, premiering in May. Uh, Nintendo, Sony updating their warranty. And that actually is all for this episode. But again, you guys will see most of that later. What we're going to move into right now is actually talking about the potentially stolen manga that appeared on an auction site. So the auction site, by the way, was, I think it's Mandarake. Um, yeah, Mandarake. And so apparently this manga is called I and Makoto. The creator of the, um, of the manga, or at least the person who drew it, uh, Iki Kajiwara. And actually, yeah, this manga was also created by uh, Takumi Naga, uh, yeah, Nagayasu. And so what ended up happening with this was apparently a piece of stolen artwork. And this is all alleged, but still the company uh, Kodansha that actually licensed, uh, that owns the rights to the manga is telling people to not buy it. So even though it's allegedly stolen, when it's coming from the source yeah. to not buy it, I have an odd feeling that it might actually be stolen, guys. I don't know. Tristan, what's your take on it? I mean... Uh, still alleged, but you know when the when the source comes out. What uh, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'd probably say it's legit. Yeah, uh, that it's stolen. It's funny. Not that it's yeah. legit. Well, I mean, it is a legit piece of artwork from the creator. Right. It just wasn't purchased. It was, a, it was a legit piece of artwork, and it was legit stolen. <laughs> exactly, and that's what's sad because mm. it's not like this is a like a recreation, like at a you know a Comic Con type event. Someone or you know this creator drew another version of it nothing like that according to the creators and according to kodansha as well this uh piece of artwork that you guys can see below you're watching the video on our youtube channel those guys on the radio you'll see it in the um like and also you'll see the article in the description box below if you want to look into this further but um but yeah no tristan it's so odd because um i wonder how it was stolen and i'm not saying that you know i need to know but um but it's still very interesting like apparently looking looking at it uh here it does say that the work when it was being serialized in weekly shonen magazine the editorial department kind of lent some of the artwork out and apparently yeah. not all of it was returned but yeah. what i'm wondering is when this was lent out so this was because this manga was from the 70s so that means that this was lent out 40 years ago and now what maybe someone's son daughter just, you know, child has the... Because it's very interesting, because, like, 
I would imagine like how someone stumbles upon this and then goes, let me auction it off. And right. like, and, and they would, because I feel like the original thieves would be like, yeah, let's not do this. People would get, you know, be on our case because there was only so many uh, places this was lent out to. So I wonder if this is like a, uh, you know, a child of the person who stole it or some relative that maybe didn't maybe. know it was stolen. Yeah, I didn't realize. Uh, yeah. No, because, like, I mean, I'm not trying to, like, you know, uh, take the blame off anybody. I just think it's odd that um, someone who stole something, 40 years later, would be like, it's time to cash in. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's been 40 years since the, uh, the manga was, you know, was being serialized. So, to me, it's very strange that they would wait till now to do it. Also, I should mention that the uh, Mandrake auction listing went up on April 20th, and it had a starting bid of 80,000 yen. So clearly someone knew that this wow. was important. I'm not saying that someone didn't know this was important, but it's odd that someone would put it online, especially for that much. Yeah. Uh, and be like, yeah, no, I stole it 40 years ago. What you going to do? Right. Catch me for stealing? It's like, well, yes, this is the internet. Uh, so yeah, so they put it up for a bid of starting bid of 80,000 yen, which is $730 USD. And then the bids actually reached, holy crap, 4 million yen, which is 36,500, before the auction closed on May 6th. According to uh, IT Media News, Kodansha didn't stop the sale, so they basically like, look, we can't, I maybe they didn't want to get through all the legal hassles of stopping the sale, but they were yes. recommending that people don't buy it. Hmm. Uh, or at least try, they said that they issued a statement trying to prevent right. them in the future. So in other words, like, hey guys, uh, unless it's through us directly or we make some kind of note of it, maybe pre like uh, pretend that it's stolen, which is odd, I guess, because I don't know, I, we don't have the, original, the actual statement here. It's just odd because I feel like this is a touch and go kind of thing. Like Kodansha has to say every single time, hey, this isn't us or this wasn't sold. But it is, I have to admit though, it is a little frustrating because now, due to those uh, thieves in the 70s, no one, I guess, knows what was sold, what wasn't. Right. I mean, they just know, hey, we, s we sent out some artwork and it never got back to us. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know what Kodansha should do about this because I would feel odd if, you know, there is like some legit artwork that was sold already years ago. Because uh, that happens sometimes, right? Not just like original, not just like artwork that's drawn and then gets sold, but just stuff like, you know, uh, companies selling off animation cells when they have no use for them anymore and stuff like that. So it would be frustrating if someone's legit trying to sell something and then they get lumped in with all these, you know, thieves um, 40 years ago at this point. But I don't know. What do you think Kodansha should do? Like, it's, it's, a, it's a hard thing to navigate, right? I yeah, I mean, yeah. if it's been so long since the artwork was taken, but... Yeah, like, I, I don't mean, know, yeah, like, they can't... Well, I mean, they're not going to track down every single person Batman style, but... I guess. Uh, yeah, it's rough, because, I mean, assuming that, you know, who they lent them out to, they didn't... I assume they didn't lend them out to, like, one specific person. I assume they lent them out to, like, firms and, like, large corporations, and, you know, something just got lost in the shuffle... But um, but I, I do wonder what Kodansha could do if this starts to become a bigger issue. You yeah. know, so more so like more um, stolen artwork gets act you know gets taken. I mean, looking at this piece right here myself, everyone can see that my phone's like right in my face. Look at this piece here. That I assume that there are some uh, details to it, which I'm sure you can see as well, Tristan. That showcase maybe because I can't read Japanese. That showcase like no 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 this was like from the office. Like, right. <laughs> like, this is from the office, actually. The original uh, artist, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But no, that it was being passed around and yeah. until it was, you know, stolen. So, um, yeah, very frustrating. Uh, shows you something, though, that um, at least to... I mean, if Kodansha made a statement before this was sold, then yeah. I think... Well, because here's, here's the interesting thing. I was going to say that... Uh, I, I guess the one thing that unifies people across the world, doesn't matter if you're in the, you know, you're in the U.S., if you're in Japan, uh, people who are fans of something going, I don't care if it's legit or not, <laughs> and buying it up. I feel like it's something that unifies us all. 
right? If, you know, someone's, like, if someone says, you know, like, I know you and I wouldn't do this, but I know that there are people out there that would be like, oh, I want to own this rare piece of Dragon Ball Z artwork. And even if you and I were like, but it was stolen from Toriyama, they'd be yeah. like, but it's original. I feel like that's something a super fan would do. And we're mm. super fans, but still, I feel like that's something someone would do. You know, just because we wouldn't do it doesn't mean no one is going to do it in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like it's something that unifies us all. I <laughs> think just, hey, it doesn't matter what's, uh, what part of the uh, world you're on. Someone, granted, I don't know if Kodansha made this statement before uh, this was sold. Because if they, if they didn't, well, then people didn't know, and I'm sure someone feels bad. Um, but yeah, I would love to know more about the story because I really want to know what the person who put this up on the, on the site, what they thought and what they wrote. But, um, but sadly I don't read Japanese and I don't believe, I think because the, um, the, the, um, what's it called? The, um, the, the, the auction isn't live anymore. We can't actually go into these descriptions. I don't think we can. So that would be a little problematic, but uh, but yeah, anything you want to say about this? I mean, you know, it's frustrating, I mean, but yeah, yeah, I'd say maybe Koansha should, you know, if, if the auction website gets another, you know, hit like mm -hmm. this, and there's another piece of artwork, like they should contact them and be like, so yeah, this isn't you guys. Yeah, exactly. This isn't us. So right. is there any way you could take it? Because I'm sure that uh, copyright wise, they could take it down. I right, just think that yeah. they might not want to open up a um, some kind of like legal precedent or some kind of box where, uh, you know, people can't create fan creations or stuff like that. Because, right. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I know nothing about Japanese politics, but, you know, I don't trust, um, like, I don't trust uh, in the U.S. court system if a precedent, if a precedent gets set, right, set, S-E-T, not send, uh, gets set, all of a sudden they're cracking down on people trying to just sell other things online. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's never, it doesn't just start off with like the one thing and ends with the one thing. It's like, oh, well, you were trying to sue them for stealing stolen artwork second hand or, yeah. you know, th you know, second, third hand. And now we're actually going to crack down on anyone trying to sell anything second hand. And it's like, no, that's not right. the precedent that was supposed to be set. So I don't know if that also applies to Japanese courts. But, um, but it is a little, you know, it's, it's something I think they should, you're right, they really should go against it if it happens again, but I wonder maybe if they're thinking, also they might be thinking it's just a drop in the bucket, like it sounds like a lot, you know, that much money, but it right. might be a drop in the bucket compared to how much Kodansha makes on a daily basis off of manga. So they might be like, no, it's not much, but if it gets to like, really like large amounts, like a million USD or more... Yeah. perhaps they're going to be like, you know what? We're going to shut this shit down right quick. So this might have been their warning. It's nice. Well, hey, guys, how about we don't do this again? Next time it's like pulls out fucking a battalion of lawyers. Like, <laughs> like just pulls them out of like a freaking like trench coat. Like, here are all I of my lawyers. Battalion of lawyers. <laughs> <in attack position. laughs> 